What's up, people? I'm Hillary. And I'm Erica. And this is Cocktails and Capitalism. Yay! So I want to say a little something about that intro music that you just heard. That is the great and talented Dreamweaver, D-R-M-W-V-R, uh, which is basically my favorite electronic artist. And uh, he, he's incredible. He does so much great work. You can find him on Instagram at D-R-E-A-M-W-E-A-V-E-R-Z-Z-Z. Um, and he's also on Facebook, dr. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> all the letters. <laughs> he's on Facebook and he's on SoundCloud. Um, but yeah, without taking out the vowels, Dreamweaver. Um, and he's he's an incredibly talented artist. But yeah, I just no, want to say thank he's you. Quite lovely. Thank you so much for creating our intro bit. It's really lovely. It goes perfectly with our whole vibe, our whole you know cocktails and capitalism and everything. It's great. I know he nailed it. He he understood the vibe that we wanted to go for better than I did when I explained it to him. Truly, so. truly, <laughs> he knocked yeah, it out of the park. A, that's a real artist. Like he <laughs> totally. did great. <laughs> I feel like he's got a a lot of work ahead of him where he could do other intro music and other great things like that. Because I feel like absolutely, you know, it's, it's better than the stuff that I hear on NPR, the intro or the like electronic music that they use in in, in their kinds of productions. Totally. So, yeah. yeah. So thanks, Dreamweaver. Thank you. You're amazing. (laughs) You're the best. (laughs) All right, Miss Erica, shall we dive on in? Let's fucking do it. Let's do it. (laughs) All right, so we are drinking two shots of rum. Shot, 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 shot. shot, shot. (laughs) Indeed. All right, Miss Erica, you ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> All right. One, two. Well, you're doing one at a time, right? Yeah. <laughs> All Here, right, cool. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yummers. Ooh, it burns good. Mm-hmm. That was a shot of rum. Did you, did you already say that? I can't remember. Yes. Yeah, so we're oh. doing two oh. shots of rum today. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit. So um, that's our rum ration for the day, Miss Erica. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. It's yeah. smart to do it as a shot then. You feel it more mm-hmm. if you're rationing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit about rum rations because I had to, I, you know, I always like my little history of stuff. I'm like, let's, mm-hmm. I want to know, mo- know more about that. Mm-hmm. So I looked it up a little bit. They were a thing um, from 1850 to 1970. They were given to sailors on Royal Navy ships in the middle of the day. (laughs) Just a little midday pick me up. (laughs) Um, Its purpose was to lift their spirits during the day while they were out at sea. So Mm -hmm. each sailor was allotted (laughs) half an imperial pint of rum a day, which translates to about 10 ounces. (laughs) It's like, these dudes are getting freaking hammered. (laughs) I mean, you build the tolerance fast. They probably like, true. I feel it a little bit. I know. know. After like week two, they're like, can we have some more? Yeah, this isn't cutting it. This isn't enough, y'all. Dude. Yeah. But I, I mean, two shots in the middle of the day to lift your spirits. That sounds pretty delightful. Sounds nice, right? <laughs> I wish I could do that for my job, but I yeah. guess it would kind of be unsustainable where I'd feel like crashing immediately afterwards. <laughs> yeah, truly, truly. Well, I mean, and that's kind of, you know, what happened is they kind of realized that these sailors weren't uh, as uh, productive and they probably wasn't the safest thing. So, on, um, <laughs> you know, after a lot of debate, it was uh, finally decided that they were no longer going to have their rum rations. <laughs> oh, so. shit. Yeah, so July 31st, 1970, was Black Tot Day, and it was the last day that the sailors received their rum ration. Yeah, so get this. I think you'll get a kick out of this. Some sailors wore black armbands (laughs) and buried their tots at sea by throwing their cups overboard. (laughs) And then they they held a mock funeral (laughs) as a way to mourn the loss of their rum ration. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's amazing. (laughs) So good. (laughs) I thought you'd like that. (laughs) Dude, and I love yeah. the throwing the glasses overboard. I wish I could like swim down and find some of them. That's I know, so, wouldn't that just be sounds great? so cool? Yeah. yeah, we could have a black tot day, like a black yeah. tot party. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe not the best thing for, the, I mean, but it's No, glass. horrible it's... for, like, the ocean, right? But, like, yeah. yeah. You don't want it to cut things or whatever, but... Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's so Aww. dope, <laughs> sweetheart. Erica always thinking about like oh, the little creatures the impacts on the environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it has a way of just like taking a big dump on anything I'm excited about. Then I'm like, oh, but th- what about this? But what about <sighs> this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to consider but, these things. But yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So our topic today is universal basic income. What? <laughs> yeah. So I was a I was had to try so hard in the, our last episode when you brought it up to not be yeah. like, "Well, you stole my thunder." <laughs> what? Wait. Did you actually were you already thinking of this topic? Yes, I was in the middle of what? researching it. Yeah, I was in the middle Holy of creating shit. and writing this episode up and uh, you brought it up and I was like, "Oh, Erica." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect segue. Yeah. yeah, no, it was really perfect. So I was like, okay, like this episode is going to follow right after. It's kind of perfect. Yeah. So Dude. Yeah, hence I'm the reasons so for curious. the the rum rationing, do a little income rationing, you know. Yeah, 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 right yeah. Right on in there in the in the topic <laughs> of the things. <laughs> That's perfect, dude. I'm I really don't know enough about this and I this is something I've wanted to dive into and learn a lot about. So Yeah. So I'm so I, stoked that you did that. I will uh start off by saying like this is a very basic like 101 overview of, yeah overview yeah. this topic is huge um mm-hmm. in my dive into researching it i was like wow i could do several episodes on this it's yeah. a, it's a big one because there's just so much to it and you know mm-hmm. we'll get into it we'll, we'll dive into some <laughs> details here but yeah it's um i encourage you and our listeners and everyone to learn more about it because it's something that it's a hot topic right now it's something that a yeah. lot of people are talking about so if you're interested there's a lot of information out there So I first became familiar with the idea um, of a universal basic income when Andrew Yang promoted his version of it um, when he was running for president earlier this year. And we kind of touched on that a little bit um, on our last episode. Mm -hmm. And and you found out I was a Yanger, (laughs) (laughs) which is, I mean, I'm not, but. (laughs) Part of the Yang gang. Yeah, Yang gang. (laughs) a proud gang member, Hillary. Uh, we wear math hats, Black. I think is what they wear, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some dorky ass thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Make America think harder, I think is what it is. <laughs> really? Does he wear that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I guess I did see that. I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> Dork alert. Awesome. I kind of love it. kind of love it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I kind of just love his personality and his like, he's just so like, sweet and kind of happy and <laughs> totally <laughs> like yeah never a downer to see never like a pissed off jerk you know? yeah yeah <laughs> you know, he, seemed, he seemed pretty pleasant <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so his plan was to give every american a thousand dollars a month free and clear paid for by the taxes on companies that would benefit the most from automation. He acknowledged that the very important fact that um, automation is going to be a huge driver for job losses in america in the very near future Mm-hmm. Yeah. So automation, if you're not familiar with it, um, can be defined as labor saving techniques that replace people with machines. And economists assert that one third of Americans will lose their jobs due to automation and technology over the next 12 years. God, I feel like it's going to be more than that. It probably is. Because like, yeah, humans are so expensive compared to like, buying mm-hmm. a machine that you don't have to get health insurance for that you don't have to like take care of or worry about and have liabilities with, you know, yeah. like, you know, possible lawsuits from employees like no you just get to own this thing literally own it (laughs) yeah 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 definitely yeah i i wonder how when what the real number is going to be you know yeah but it's gonna be huge no matter what yeah i mean like because you you purchase a machine once you have to continue to pay you know your employee your human employees yeah you know (laughs) to keep them alive because that's what it takes (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) So we'll we'll see. It'll. I mean, it's happening. This there. This isn't like um. This isn't just like a, a maybe situation. This is absolutely going to happen. So we'll see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To really get into the details of all of this, it's really important to differentiate the difference between a universal basic income and a guaranteed basic income. So those are different. Um. So a universal basic income, um, in its most basic definition, 
is a program that distributes free money and guarantees a minimum income by the government. The key mm-hmm. here is that it's distributed to all of its citizens, regardless of need. So my household would get it, your household would get yeah. it, your neighbor would get it, you know, whatever. Um, Bezos would get it. Bezos would get it. <laughs> like everyone gets it, regardless of need. Um, mm-hmm. A guaranteed income is different. Um, it's a system of payments by a government to citizens who fail to meet one or more means tests. And a means test is a determination of whether an individual or family is eligible for government assistance. So you actually have to like need this income. Mm-hmm. You know, your your upper echelons are not going to be able to, you know, reap these benefits. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's really important to differentiate because um, when – you know, politicians or economists or whomever are talking about um, these income programs, you should know what they're trying to propose, you know, like, and maybe like, okay, do you support it or not? Are you for, you know, maybe, maybe you are for a universal basic income, or like, would you prefer a more guaranteed minimum, minimum income? Um, Mm -hmm. And all of these different programs can be cut in so many different ways. Um, And we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. I didn't even know the the difference between those, so so that's great to know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I didn't either. It's like that's that's kind of why I had prefaced this episode with like, okay, there's a lot here, guys. <laughs> I mean, we yeah. could do a whole episode on just universal basic income. We could do a yeah. whole episode on guaranteed minimum income. We could yeah. do. I mean, th- there's a lot here, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll touch on some things. <laughs> um, nice. So I think one of the things that kind of helped me digest this information um, was I found this great pros and cons list that the balance.com put together. This list focuses a little bit more on the pros and cons of a universal basic income. So that's something to keep in mind. So some of the pros are um, that they highlighted is um, people would have the freedom to return to school or to stay home to care for a relative. And I thought that was a really important pro to touch on because um, there are so many people who could benefit from just like going to like a nine month program or a 12 month program at like a community college and like and better themselves, you know, or maybe yeah. like they're in a job currently where um, the one thing keeping them from a promotion is that that next level of education, you yeah. know. So Mm -hmm. that tiny bit of income may provide them the opportunity to go, okay, like those, that little bit of my finances is covered. I have Mm -hmm. this little bit of wiggle room to then, you know, go do this program or whatever. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's a huge pro, I think. Another pro that was highlighted was um, it may help remove the poverty trap from traditional welfare programs. So what is the poverty trap? So that is an idea that individuals in welfare programs will never get out of them because um, they're not given the opportunity to yeah. move move out of them. So that's um, a great term to know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the Balance.com listed that as a pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure that that is something that could actually happen um, in doing my research. It, a lot of the things that other sources pointed out was that you know the basic income whatever that amount may be may not be enough to get out of the poverty trap yeah so um that was one thing that I kind of was like okay that the idea of it is good however is it like realistically feasible I'm not sure yeah yeah um that was a difficult one to try and juggle and really dig into and like find like some real answers yeah Um, I mean I wonder where you'd even go to find that like what do people because you know the cost of living is different in yeah, a, right. every town you know like right it's right it, that's yeah, a hard getting thing somebody to out of yeah absolutely yeah. getting somebody out of poverty poverty in san francisco is going to be a completely different picture than oh getting God. somebody out of poverty in like you know yeah tulsa oklahoma or something like that you know because like, they could be making like you know bank at a big high tech job in San Francisco making right. six figure income or whatever and and still be like unable to afford anything and yeah. living out of their car. <laughs> like- yeah. Yeah. You you hear of all of the horror stories of individuals explaining like, hey, I make one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year and I am struggling. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's crazy. Yeah, that's so insane to me. So then you you know you consider something like, okay, a thousand dollars a month, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's hard. It's like, it, it's, I don't know. I don't want to just like not sh- having it. Right. Vers- you know, ber- versus just leaving people to be living in the streets and have nothing. 
Yeah. So that one with the poverty trap um, point is a really difficult one to figure out. I do yeah. see that as as a pro, you know, like over, like if you just kind of like maybe f- like instead of um, attacking it with logic, maybe just attacking it from like the simple fact of like, is this going to help? Yeah, they're going to have a thousand dollars more, you know? Yeah, 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 so. yeah, for sure. Are they going to be able to eat? Right. Are they going to be able to pay right. pay for a place? The right. basic human necessities. Will they be satisfied or not? Like, yeah, way fucking more so if you give people that and have yes. just that kind That's- of bottom line elevating the bottom line a little bit right you know right that's that's not the right way to say it it's not the bottom line but you know no i, I know what you're trying to say though and i, and I feel mm-hmm. like you know our listeners get it too like yeah <laughs> thanks guys um, thanks guys we love you <laughs> we love you so much <laughs> seriously though thank you for tuning in we it means a fuck ton to both of us it really does we've been um really touched by everyone reaching out and saying you know hey you know, we appreciate what you guys are doing and, and, you know, enjoyed this episode. Like, we hear you. We're excited that you're there listening and that you're sharing with us. And uh, we hope that you stick around. Yeah, totally. I mean, the amount of excitement and joy I feel when I hear from people and hear that they're really excited also about the topics that we're covering and, and about listening to us. Like, it just, yeah, it explodes my heart yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys we get, we get giddy about it quite often yeah. <laughs> totally yeah yeah the last pro that i want to um, highlight is um, that payments could help stabilize the economy during recessionary periods and mm-hmm. i think that that's a really important point to bring up right now especially during covid um, mm-hmm. we are technically in a recession right now and a lot of people are being affected by losing their jobs during COVID. And I just can't help but wonder, like, if we already had a universal basic income in place, like, how that would help so many people right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this topic is so important right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I, we were talking about before, I didn't think of that as, like, something that should definitely be there until COVID happened. And right. I'm, I'm looking around and I'm realizing like what the wealth disparity really is in this country and like how many people are a paycheck away from poverty, Yeah, you know, like dire poverty. So yeah, so yeah, a it's... universal basic income could be that safety net that keeps people just, yeah. you know, kind of hanging on, you know, as yeah. they transition, job transition and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Totally. So some of the cons that the balance highlighted was, um, that inflation could be triggered because of the increase in demand for goods and services. That I'm not 100% sure how true that, that would be. sound right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, if you look at it at, from a very textbook perspective, I think that that's, like, the normal, um, you know, way that things are explained. I, yeah. I'm just not sure about that. I mean, like, the with all of the um, interviews that I read from people um, benefiting from universal basic income programs that are already in place i mean they Mm -hmm. were just like buying groceries and hang their bills like things that like they were already trying to do like yeah i mean it's not like they're you know all of a sudden had a ton of money to go out buy a new car you know or like um live the luxury life yeah yeah exactly like these folks aren't buying yachts (laughs) y'all like (laughs) so I wasn't 100% sure about that um but I mean I think that like when you do think about it on a large scale like if you're giving everybody in the United States a thousand dollars that's a lot of money and that money will be going back into the economy and so that 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 could trigger inflation so that one I mean I'm not an economist I don't I don't freaking know but (laughs) That one was was kind of a, I don't know if that's going to happen or not, I think. That- yeah, yeah. I mean, inflation is bad when, when you have inflation and, and the value of your money is less and less. Right. Um, but having more money circulating and having more people able to buy things, I thought that that would convert to cutting down on inflation, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. Prob- if, if you know about this, email us, shoot yeah. us an email and, you know, lecture Cocktails us about it. Capitalism <laughs> at gmail.com. Shoot us an yeah. email. Yeah, it'd be really interesting to get some extra details on this because, yeah, you know, this is something that we're facing right now. It'd be really interesting to know, like, how that would actually work in our economy right now. Yeah, so be able to kind of visualize it. Mm-hmm. Certainly. Um, so another con that they highlighted was there wouldn't be an increased standard of living in the long run because of inflated prices. So, and in I mean, we already kind of touched on that a little bit. 
Um, what? Yeah. That's... So because everything would be more expensive, you wouldn't be able to afford it. And so you, you'd have more money, but you wouldn't be able to afford all this stuff anyway. So you're still stuck at the same spot. So then one more thing that they highlighted was um, a reduced program with smaller payments wouldn't make a real difference to poverty stricken families. So and that was that was actually one of the concerns that I had already had. Like, it, would this even really be enough to make a difference? Um, I mean, if you're living on peanuts, if you're living on nothing and yeah, not able to afford anything, like I don't see how it couldn't could not make a difference you know right yeah and that I mean and that's ultimately you know the conclusion that I come to too it's like okay like this a universal income wouldn't hurt someone Mm -mm. like it can only benefit and if if more people can buy more of the products that people are making that the wealthier selling and profiting from doesn't everyone win in that picture I mean I would think so yeah I would think so so I mean, these are the questions that make me that, you know, that I that I had, you know, in doing this research and piecing this episode together that made me realize Mm -hmm. like, okay, this is a huge topic. Yeah, this is a complicated issue. We could easily do several, several episodes on this, just diving deeper and deeper and deeper into it because it's complicated. It's been weeks researching it. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. totally. Yeah, Yeah, totally. (laughs) I wanted to give an example of um, a uh, guaranteed income program that's happening right now. Um, Mm. And I wanted to talk about Stockton's Guaranteed Income Pilot Program by telling the story of a woman who has greatly benefited from it. Lauren is a single mom living in Stockton, California, who works two jobs. Each only pay $15 an hour, and she tries to make ends meet. Mm. Trying to raise two children on your own and make sure that all of the bills are paid was something that caused Lauren a lot of stress and worry. Mm. Even though she was able to pay her bills every month, she was still in a constant state of concern, wondering if she was going to be able to make next month bills. Yeah. On top of that, her car had been totaled for some time and her mother's health care bills were piling up due, her, due to her battle with cancer. Oh, no. Yeah, rough. Mm. Some relief came when she was chosen as a recipient of Stockton's Guaranteed Income Program. It's a Stockton Economic Empowerment Demonstration, otherwise mm. known as SEED, S-E-E-D. Lauren reports that receiving the additional income has been life-changing. She says that she feels as if she is able to breathe. Mm. She reports she now has the ability to save up to buy a newer, more reliable car, and she even plans to go back to college. Oh, yes. That's so awesome. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Yeah. My heart and my spirits are so lifted for Lauren. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. There are several more stories um, about the people in this program and how they've benefited from it under the storytelling section, the SEED program's website. Mm -hmm. Um, It's StocktonDemonstration.org. And just, I was flipping through those stories, just so deeply affected by them, just just so happy for these individuals and just so hopeful and so just marveling at like how simple the solution was. Like, I mean, not, not to say that like, this income like solved all their problems but like this little bit of income helped change their lives drastically and um yeah like lauren said she finally felt as if she was able to breathe yeah there was another story of an individual um he is a um a single dad and uh no i'm sorry he's um was a single dad he's um now engaged to a gal but um he's trying to raise his two daughters and he's um also working several jobs and he was explaining that the income helped him to be able to take a little bit of of time off of his evening job so that he can Mm. be at home with his kids oh yeah yeah and he was like this story is gonna make me cry but yeah (laughs) um, he um, yeah so like he was explaining that because he was able to take a little bit more time at home that he could do things like help them with their homework and tuck them into bed and yeah and he was saying that he hadn't had those experiences before and that it was really wonderful to have that time with his family and to really enjoy the things that import that are important in life yeah oh my it's god like, and That's he was able amazing. to do that because of this program yeah yeah so it's really really beautiful Ugh. so it's just I'm like so happy that that was available to them that right? like there are things out there there are options out there to kind of catch these people when they're just barely you know struggling to stay alive and yeah gasping for breath yeah I used to work with kids with disabilities and I um I was taking care of this little girl whose mom 
was paying me half her paycheck to to take care of her and i was like what like i feel bad accepting money from this person like i feel bad being paid by you because it just like if if they're not able to be there tucking their kid into bed and stuff they're not because they're making a little bit more money then they're yeah. paying the person at home. Like, that's a fucking horrible, horrible, yeah. alienating just, you know, to be that distant from th- your loved ones mm-hmm. because you need to just barely eke out a, a life. <laughs> you know? Yeah, certainly. Certainly. It's I mean, and so you're sad. you're bringing a topic in my mind that's, that's a huge struggle for a lot of people right now, especially um, working from home during COVID. The yeah. struggle to decide whether you're going to stay at home and take care of your children or to send them to daycare while you work is yeah. is a very hard decision for a lot of families to make. Oh, my God. Um, you know, do you even make enough to pay for the daycare? Sometimes mm-hmm. the answer is no. It You know, it's it's a really tough situation. And, yeah. and really do you feel comfortable decision. dropping them off there with a bunch of other kids during a pandemic? Yeah. Like it's such a uh, more than ever before a difficult call to make yeah, yeah, and then you tough. just sacrifice your income because you have to stay home with them mm-hmm. like oh shit that's not a fucking good thing for for people for society right, right. definitely not a sustainable situation in the means yeah no but, but i wanted to um dive into seed a little bit so this is a description straight from their website seed is a project by stockton mayor michael tubbs in February 2019, we began giving 125 Stocktonians a guaranteed income of $500 a month for 18 months. This wow. income is unconditional, meaning there are no strings attached and no work requirements. It is a hand up rather than a handout. Is this a like trial run if it's only 125 people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's only for 18 months. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's actually a, there's a research team behind it from other states even. Like, they're not cool. even involved. They're not in California. They're not in Stockton. Yeah. Um, and they're researching this program to get an understanding of, like, you know, what the benefits are of this program. What are the downfalls? What are – what can yeah. be improved? What – how can this be implemented if it possibly can? Does it or so. does it not – change the outcomes of these people's lives in a way that matters so yeah they have like a whole rubric um on their um on the website of like the questions that they they are asking of this of this program like is it helping Mm -hmm. people financially is it helping them psychologically too like helping to bring um that just little bit of stress take that little bit of stress off of their life yeah that improve their mental health Yeah. yeah That's amazing. Um, yeah, so it's really, really cool. It's a, it's an interesting program. Um, <laughs> tons and tons and tons of information about it on their website. I highly recommend a, a peruse. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. The latest report of the research an- analyzing the effects of seed was released on September 1st, 2020. So very recently. Hmm. Yeah, it showed that after nine months, less than 2% of seed recipients were unemployed and not looking for work. Less so, than 2%? Mm-hmm. Do they know yeah. what it was before? I guess like it was more of a change. Okay. So like less than 2% of seed recipients, the individuals that were working like didn't decide to then be unemployed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the second thing was 40% of the cash was spent on food. 25 was spent on merchandise like clothing and home goods. And then the rest was just a bunch of tiny little things. Necessities, things that... You fucking can't really live without. Yeah. Not, no luxuries. No. Right. What we were explaining earlier. Like they're not people... going out and buying weed. <laughs> yeah. No one exactly. And I think that that's like you hear. So like in in my um, deep dive on the crap show that is the Internet, <laughs> um, <laughs> like all of these, like I found these like really stupid like discussion boards on it just to kind of like trying to get an idea as to like how people are feeling about um mm-hmm universal basic income programs and stuff like that super smart and uh people were saying the dumbest stuff like well they're just gonna take that money and they're just gonna go buy drugs and like yeah, they're just gonna buy booze and they're just gonna go get really drunk and, uh, <laughs> it's like God, what they say about really, homeless people you really think so low of your fellow man yeah like that's so messed up like, and to, to use that as an, as an excuse to not help people that are in need bingo like, yeah just that's like messed up just like people do with the homeless like mm-hmm. 
don't give them money because they're just going to go spend it on some exactly. drugs and booze. And you're like, even if they fucking do, I'd rather them have that tiny bit of comfort and, you know, something to bring joy to their lives, if that's what it is, than right. for them to have nothing and no human kindness ever given to them, you know? Right. Like right. fucking leave them alone because you're like, they're just going to do this. And I'm judging them already for what I think they're going to do with it. Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, no, these people are just buying food. Yeah. They're fucking hungry, everybody. Yeah. They <laughs> can't survive without your help. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then the last thing that the research showed was that um, the recipients had reported an increased amount of time spent with family. Hmm. Oh, yay. Yeah. So, so important. I that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the family, thing, yeah. <laughs> always going to hear the kiddo in the background. Yeah. <laughs> hey, babe. Hey, bud. <laughs> Mommy's almost done. <laughs> so, one of the things that I wanted to highlight is the fact that Mayor Wait, Michael Wait, Are you almost done? Because if that's the case, then let's do a shot. Oh, yeah, let's do a shot. <laughs> Shot, Cheers, shot, girl. Shot. <laughs> cheers, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> um, cheers to those who wish us well and to those who don't go to hell. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Ugh. Mm. Ugh. Rum, though. Woo-hoo. Shots of rum. <laughs> you get I don't saucy usually do that. <laughs> no, <laughs> neither do. No, like I usually go for like the. Like girly, fruity, hide the alcohol drink. Yeah. So like us <laughs> doing shots over here is like <laughs> different <Totally>. game. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm an old mom. <laughs> Moms you're, don't do shots. <laughs> you're a young, lively, uh, vigorous. <laughs> That's a weird word for it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll take vigorous. You're a vigorous mommy. <laughs> I'm a vigorous mom. <laughs> You're going to be a vigorous mom too, Erica. I hope so. I hope someday. I would yeah, love that. Totally. <laughs> I get such a kick out of some little mini, mini me's. <laughs> I know. I'm going to get a kick out of it. <laughs> and hopefully they can actually play together. Yeah. Definitely. Fucking stupid pandemic fucking pandemic yeah fuck you pandemic <laughs> fuck you pandemic <laughs> get kick out of our lives <laughs> kick rocks pandemic <laughs> <laughs> all right mm-hmm. so so one of the things that i that i think is really important to highlight um is a fact that mayor michael tubbs pointed out since the income is distributed on debit cards and this is the seed program they distribute the income on debit cards It allows the person freedom to spend it how they need. So instead of a fixed benefit like food stamps, you can't pay for like unexpected hospital bills and medications or new shoes or your electrical bill with food stamps, right? Like, Mm -hmm. and I'm not knocking food stamps like that. Like that's a very important program that we have that that people utilize and are helping them. Totally. But I just saw. I really did see the benefit of that. Like you know, this debit card of a chunk of money helps them use that money the way that that person needs it yeah yeah it's and not I, just like I hadn't we're thought about only that. gonna like, give oh, okay. it to you we're only gonna give it to you in this form because we don't trust you with spending right. money or anything you know like yeah if they need if they're gonna get evicted from their house unless they pay their bills then keep them in their home you know <laughs> yeah yeah totally another thing that i wanted to highlight was uh where a seed gets their money so there weren't any tax dollars used for this program so a lot of the times people um shit on uh ubi's universal basic incomes because they're like well i don't want to pay for that or like the you know big companies are gonna have to pay for that and you know these big companies shouldn't have to do that blah 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 they'll go Um, overseas or whatever exactly yes that's typically the go-to argument and it's like well no you're they're already going overseas for everything yes because it's (laughs) cheaper because that's capitalism (laughs) exactly exactly yes so that's not even where this money came from um it was funded by the economic security project which is a nonprofit that sponsors other guaranteed income experiments fuck yeah dude yeah so like that's not even a concern people so Hush. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
But it, another thing that I find really interesting is um, this really just isn't a new idea, like, at all. Like, this wasn't just, like, Andrew Yang's, like, fantastical new idea <laughs> in the um, – the election like Mm -hmm. these ideas of giving people a basic income and and like you know basic security net um has has, is a really old 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 idea um it goes as far back as in 1797 thomas Paine published a pamphlet called the agrarian justice it Mm. proposed Mm. that a lump sum be granted to all citizens at adulthood then defined as 21 years old i didn't know thomas Paine did that that's awesome yeah right wow (laughs) yeah his plan was to tax land owners um once per per generation to turn around and give the money to those who did not have land Hmm. yeah so Mm-hmm. Makes so much sense. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> In the 1960s, the economist Milton Friedman, like one of the most famous economists, um, and the Nixon administration, fuck the Nixon administration, <laughs> considered, a <laughs> considered a negative income tax. <laughs> In contrast to standard income tax where people pay money to the government, people with low incomes would not have to pay taxes and would receive money from the government. The amount of guaranteed income would gradually decrease the more money you made. So that's kind of the idea behind a a negative income tax. And like that made sense. What is it called? A what? A negative income tax. Negative income tax. Okay. NIT. NIT. Okay. I mean, that's another one of those things where like we could do a whole nother freaking episode on that. Dude. Dude, I'm like. While I'm dude. listening to you, dude, I, <laughs> I keep thinking about like Trump's tax returns and the fact that he hasn't paid jack oh shit. My God. Yeah, you okay. fucking my motherfucker. Yold, my blood is still <laughs> boiling. Like, oh. yeah. And then God. like, and then I was reading about like Amazon and how much they've paid in taxes, and they didn't pay taxes they for didn't. like many, many years. I know, except for like, I know. oh, they finally so had to. Many other humongous companies. It's like it's ridiculous, dude. Why? Why the fuck would anyone think that it's smart to not take money from where the money is? Like, right. why the fuck would you ever think take it from the fucking little guy that has nothing to live off mm-hmm. of? Because yeah. that's what like universal taxes on. Taxes on cigarettes, taxes on food, taxes on other exactly. things. That's It hurts the little guy so much. Why would you yeah. ever fucking do that? Just tax right. the big guy. It totally. makes 100% sense. And like, unless you've sold yourself to the that fucking, uh, the line that you need to keep the money in the U.S. and keep trickle the wealthiest, down. wealthiest per- possible. But it's trickle down economics there. I can let them keep their money <laughs> yeah. so that it can trickle on down in their ginormous corporation and it'll eventually get to the little guy. Like, what the what? I saw this fantastic <laughs> no. meme that someone sent to me that was this, like, tower of wine glasses and there's, like, a wine glass at the top and it says, like, it's, it's like a pyramid with the top one. It's like, this is what people think trickle-down economics does. And it's like the wine is being poured into the top one. It's going down to all the bottom ones in the pyramid. And then the uh-huh. other one is like, this is what trickle-down economics is really about. It's just this one gigantic wine glass at the top. It's like, and it's all <laughs> in that, that. one. <laughs> yeah. That's a perfect like picture of like what it actually yeah. is. Yeah. Like, and I feel we'll like... We'll share it. <laughs> no, we totally need to. Yeah. We totally need to. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, because that's accurate. And, like, I feel like images like that, like, really stay with people, like, help clarify yeah. um, ideas and, and concepts for Solidify people. Solidify like, a really great meme. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send it to you after this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where the heck am I? Where are we going? What's... What's up? What's down? What's yeah, what's what left? What's right? Hell? What are you oh, doing? so let's see here. Mm, another example of a universal basic income. So this one was kind of a, a an interesting one. It was really kind of hard to look up. Apparently, the startup company um, Y Combinator in Silicon Valley are attempting to have a pilot program, or they do have a pilot program called Making Ends Meet. Hmm. And it's very similar to Stockton's program. They were going to give $1,000 um, to 1,000 people living in Oakland with no strings attached. And uh, I, I really kind of tried to look more into it, and I couldn't find a whole lot. I don't know if it actually launched or not. I found one article that was explaining that they were trying to launch it in March right before the pandemic, which really threw a wrench in their 
in yeah, their, in their uh, gears. program. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then I, I had kind of moved on to, to write the rest of this episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> whoops. <laughs> no but, worries. Uh, yeah, I should. But, but I mean, I mean, I wanted to keep that in there because like there are, to show that like there are several other examples of, um, you know, people trying to test this out and see how it works and see if it's something that's feasible. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's an example of, you know, how it didn't work. I'm not sure. I'll have to look more into making ends meet in that program and yeah, totally. if it's if it happened, if it's if it's operating, if it's not or whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, and I and I hope it is. I really hope that um, it it actually launched and then it helped started helping benefit people. But yeah, yeah, it was it was hard to figure out. Kind of a funky one. So opponents of a universal basic income argue that it would be more damaging than helpful. According to one article by the Brookings Institute. A UBI in its most basic form would be prohibitively expensive and yet do little to reduce inequality or advanced opportunity. What? Why? Why did they think that? So they they argued that a better tactic would be to devote that level of spending to targeted benefits and then focusing on the poorest and those hit hardest by... Yeah, the guaranteed minimum Mm -hmm. yes yeah Yeah. i think that that's kind of what they were trying to get at is like this is too expensive we need to triage (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. and uh you know i feel like that's fair i feel like that's a fair argument i feel like don't waste it giving it to people that don't need it don't waste it it's just a waste when people have they don't they don't need to buy more beds more cars more anything than other human right. beings need to <laughs> right, like right. don't give it they don't them. need their third mercedes yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not a necessity and it's not gonna be like important for society you know right so speaking of opponent in our in our last episode you had mentioned that you thought that a ubi wasn't a great idea do you want to dive a little bit more into that like what the main reason why i just learned a lot about populism and populism Uh in latin america and how oftentimes when politicians are like vote for me i'll give you money i'll give you Mm -hmm. i'll give you some toasters i'm gonna give toasters to everyone who votes for me or like a microwave or like some fucking thing Or like, it's like a buying the vote kind of thing. And I don't like that approach. But I do like... That's dirty. Yeah, that's dirty. And it's kind of just, yeah, like dirty and unnecessary. I was skeptical about it mostly because I I saw it as an attempt, like a populist attempt to try to buy votes from people. And I don't necessarily think that's the case now after learning more about universal basic income and guaranteed minimum income as you're teaching me about. Um, You know, I think that that these are things that are necessary in the times where if your economic structures are such that the money is always filtering up because, because of lobbying, because, you know, like money in politics, because of all of these things, then it makes sense to have provisions for giving money to the people at the bottom that are being stripped of everything and take it that makes sense to me yeah yeah so i totally changed my my view on that i completely did a reverse reversal on that so (laughs) yeah interesting very cool yeah yeah and i mean i um i hope that this episode gives people a lot of food for thought because like even in my research i felt myself tutoring back and forth yeah like when I first dove into it, I went into it going like, uh, you know, this is a great thing. This is such a good idea. Like, I'm going to be like the champion of it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cheerlead it and, you know, make sure everyone's on my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, but then learning more about it, like the more, the, the deeper and deeper that I got into all of the nitty gritty details of it, it's like, okay, wait, like maybe, maybe this is, you know, not such a good piece of it. Or maybe that's not such a good piece of it. Or maybe. Yeah. You know, what What if it does actually, you know, cause inflation or what act? What if yeah. it does do X, Y, you know, so like yeah. all of those details kind of, you know, n- they like need to kind of be addressed and figured out and all that jazz. Mm-hmm. But um, after doing all of my research and even, you know, continuing to learn more about it, just because I'm just genuinely fascinated by it, I, d- I still do um, think that overall it's a really great idea. Yeah. Um, it's a really great opportunity for a lot of people and that. Maybe we should try to figure out how to implement it in the United States in some form. Yeah. Um, 
Totally. Maybe maybe not the way that Yang proposes. Maybe not the way that Stockton's doing it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't have that answer. <laughs> but those are some great like things to point to and to be able to say these people are champ. This person's champion. This this thing right. has already happened. You know, th- yeah. these are directions that we could potentially go in as a country, and maybe capitalism won't collapse. <laughs> you know, yeah, right? <laughs> maybe like. Yeah. Our economy won't just go to shit because people are ground so deeply into the dirt that they can't afford anything and they can't stay right. alive. I love Marx's literature. And one of the basic things in Marx is that like capitalism is always going to have this tendency to cut pay for people to the point where, but it can't pu- push, it can't cut pay beyond where it will keep them alive. Like yeah. where it will sustain their lives because you need workers. So you need right. to feed those right. workers enough to stay alive. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I feel that we're already there, though. Like, yeah. You can't just have one job. You can't like, have one, one job. One job is not going to pay for your groceries and your rent and your electricity bill and your 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 car payment and yeah. daycare and all. Like, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. You need, this is a dual income society where, you know, you need a partner and all of it mm-hmm. or multiple jobs. Yeah. Two and three and four jobs. Yeah. You know, or you're, you know, in that lucky I think probably minority, um, you know, where you have a job where you're getting paid <laughs> it enough. covers everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that more and more and more people are in the former, not the latter. Yeah. People have adapted to the way that the economy has moved and how it's right. gotten harder and harder and harder to make a living and to just right. keep afloat. And people are yeah. working, working harder, harder, harder to stay afloat. Mm-hmm. But it's not, you can't keep doing that to people. You have to you have to give them something so that they can keep living if you want to have a working class period, you know, unless yeah. you're just going to import that and have illegal immigrants that you can abuse and misuse, you know, then, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, that is oh. another. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> sorry. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are the things, though, you know, <laughs> this is the I show. Know. I know. I uh, This is the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling a little drunky. <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut, shut. <laughs> yeah, you did it to me, Hillary. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Okay, I just have a, I have a little bit more. Okay. <laughs> hang, hang in there. <laughs> in this article um, by the Brookings, the Brookings Institute, um, some other things that they highlighted was it would be more helpful if there were policies dedicated to human capital development instead of mere redistribution, and that it would produce a much greater social return than a UBI. So, like that's the, that was their biggest argument. Um, it was also noted that people may get a smaller monetary payment from a UBI than from the amount that they're currently receiving from several other programs. So that was the thing that um, made me kind of think a little bit further about like, oh, shit, like one of the ways that UBIs work is that um, or that people have proposed a UBI is like, okay, we'll have a universal basic income, but all the other programs have got to go because Mm -hmm. all of the money that was going into funding those programs are going to be to fund a UBI. Mm -hmm. And the argument, you know, with that is that, you know, they'll be better off. It'll be more money, blah, blah, blah. But that's not necessarily the case. Huh. Yeah. So it would end up hurting individuals in the long run because they wouldn't receive as much money as they are from as as much as money as they're getting from their these current programs that are already in place. Oh, huh. So yeah. Um. So that's kind of hard. It's like okay, then maybe do we just stick with what we have? Mm. That's why I really liked Stockton's program is because it was an addition to the programs. Nice. They they put they made it very clear like, hey, this will not hurt you in any way. Like and you the other will benefits have, you're accessing already. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No strings attached. That's so awesome. I thought that was really beautiful. And it, you know, and I think that like I, w- I would still be in support of a UBI if that was the case. Like, please don't get rid of these programs. This, if we can make this happen in a financial way that's feasible, that like it's an addition to instead of a replacement of. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Totally. So, totally. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. Another thing that people um, highlighted as like a big concern with UBIs is um, it would create a reduction in workforce. And several several sources touched on this concern. I don't know why it was the thing to highlight. Well, but, because um, they wouldn't be going to work because they're getting money already. That yeah, that's that's the concern. Oh, huh. Um, 
you know, stating that like, oh, well, people are just going to get lazy and, you know, they're no longer going to want to go to work. That accusation and, again. <laughs> Yeah, so that accusation, and 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 I found that um, in so many articles against a UBI, mm-hmm. and it was just it's just a tiring point. That's like no, you know, analysis of programs that are already in place showed that most people kept their jobs. Yeah, you know, um, I found this other really fascinating article um, that pointed out like, hey, what is so wrong with somebody deciding to take care of their X Y Z relative instead of working or doing this other thing instead of working like what is so wrong with that like yeah who are you to say that that's a negative yeah dude so I thought I thought that was an interesting challenge to that totally that Um, kind of mentality that everyone needs to be working no matter what and if you aren't uh then you're a lazy piece of shit that's a burden on society like no you could perform a different function in society that isn't about money and be valuable in a different way you know, you mm-hmm. you can be taking care of kids. You can be taking care of elders. You can be doing whatever it is that is providing some some kind of value, but it's not monetary. And if you are being paid for that, you're being paid jack shit. <laughs> you know, like yeah. And just because you're not on somebody else's payroll, yeah. right, and you're not contributing to that, you know, that workforce, like doesn't mean that you're not contributing in another way. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's just a short sighted argument. Um, and like really kind of digging into that like helped me to understand that a little bit more and kind of go like wait like maybe that isn't something that is a problem after all guys yeah <laughs> yeah totally yeah totally other critics addressed the idea and I do say idea because it's not a fact um the idea that if less people worked then it would lead to less tax revenue and less money for states to utilize for funds of those other social programs so I thought that was another interesting point to bring up um Again, not sure how true that is. Yeah. Not sure how much of an impact that would have on those other social programs. And if um, less people would even be working if you did that. Right. Or if they would right. just keep working so. to try to better better their lot in life because they don't want to just eke out a basic living. I mean, some people might, but yeah. well, the majority the idea don't. Even, right, exactly. And the idea even breaks apart even further when you go back to the fact that some of the basic income program, income programs – don't even utilize state taxes on the lower income brackets anyways. So hmm. it yeah. just, I found holes in that argument that I was just like, all right, well, pfft, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not, not really sure that's a good, uh, a good argument against it. Yeah. So, but maybe that's just my bias for, you know, yeah. a UBI. I, so not sure. I mean, I guess I could kind of in some ways see like, yeah, if I if I'm getting a check, then I'm less inclined to be like I need to go out there and fucking risk my life during a pandemic to get a job delivering food mm-hmm. and deliver, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it is where I'm like basically making making a living barely by mm-hmm. filling a role at this yeah. crazy time. Just scraping by. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I just think it's not the right argument. People no, because it's not. because people want to yeah, do you, things with their lives. When it's that easy to poke holes in an argument, it's a crap argument. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and like, money isn't the only reason to do things. Like, you want to have yes. ego status. Okay, can you say that again? Money. Say it louder for the people in the back, Erica. <laughs> money isn't the only reason to do things. <laughs> word because <laughs> like you might want to be a provider of medical services to you you want might want to be a doctor that is esteemed and have real value that you're providing to people in that way like you, there's other reasons to want to do things that yes. isn't just because i'm trying to stave off the like possibility of dying from hunger and being on the street you know like i'm trying to like yeah. escape those realities it's it right. doesn't have to be a like fleeing from an awful fucking alternative. It could be mm-hmm. I want to be this person in society and I want to serve this role and I want to be a good person or, you know, I want to teach. That brings me value in other ways that aren't just fucking money. Because you don't feel yeah. that great just having money. It doesn't feel that right. great. You know, <laughs> like no. you want to no. do other things with your life and not feel like you're a waste of space, you know. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And to think that humans are all about material wealth, and that's the only kind of wealth that you're thinking about, is really fucking a narrow perspective. So, yeah, I mean, in my jaded view of America is that it's just like, you know, how a lot of people are, but yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's just our culture, you know, consume, 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 consume. I guess, consume. I mean, I guess there are some people that are definitely just about that, but like, I can't even imagine living like that. 
I can't. No way, man. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, it's not an option. Not my jam. It's not an option for me. Yeah. It's not a, my jam. It's not something I'd ever want to spend my life doing. And I think that Tits. there's way more people like us that want to do something that's valuable, not because it's just monetary. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> So in our last episode, we touched on how um, a UBI might be able to help the homeless. Mm -hmm. And after digging and digging, I unfortunately found very little to no information on how we might be able to get a UBI fund to the homeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So even if we could, some sources argued that it wouldn't be enough to actually get them on their feet and get them their basic needs met. Yeah. So that was a big bummer too. Yeah. One source argued that a, a UBI wouldn't be enough and that a better solution would be to put in social programs that get people jobs and housing instead of giving them a small chunk of change that may feed them or clothe them or, or something, these things that are beneficial but doesn't give them the real problem solver. Um, yeah. I mean... And gets them out of their situation. I don't think it's one so. or the other though like it could just be both because you want to have those programs in place to get people jobs to get them off the streets and to get them yeah you know making money making your economy stronger Mm -hmm. and i know like in in my ideal world it would be those both of those programs are in place yeah yeah. i mean we're in the wealthiest nation on the planet we have the money here it's just a matter of accessing it from the right places and distributing it to the right people Yes. We're not. No, and we really suck at that. Yeah. (laughs) yeah. We're good at letting it pool in pockets, but. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Well, that is all of the information I had for you, Miss Erica. Dude, thank you so much for doing all that research. That was fantastic. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. (laughs) I really did. I I didn't know enough about that, and you taught me so much, so. I I learned a lot, and there's so much more to learn, and I'm sure that I'll still be digging into this one, because this is a crazy topic (laughs) yeah and it's something that we're going to be thinking about more and more during this crazy Mm -hmm. time that we're living through that is fucking unprecedented in terms of like a pandemic and also in terms of the economy being crazy and (laughs) Mm -hmm. being in the late late stages of capitalism doing crazy shit i guarantee you i guarantee you we're going to be seeing even more and more and more articles about this yeah like this is for fucking this is going to be a lot of people are talking about this right now yeah So shall we close our episode? Would you like to say our closing statement? Oh, fuck yeah. (laughs) All right. Oh, I heard a really, you know what? I heard a quote today that I really liked that was really very similar to um, the quote that we've chosen. It was, we can't eat money or drink oil. Boom. Boom. (laughs) Truth truth bomb. (laughs) Fucking truth bomb. By an indigenous activist named Autumn Peltier. And it is much like the quote that we've been closing on, which is, there's no wealth but life. (laughs) Bye, motherfuckers. Bye, motherfuckers. (laughs)